Hello, everyone. I'm Melissa Shepard. I am um, president and CEO of uh, Lizard Tech Consulting. I'm a 26 times Salesforce certified technical architect. Um, and I'm also the group leader of the CTA City Slack. Um, and today I wanted to present to you something that I worked on through my preparation for the CTA exam. Um, so I tend to do a lot of proof of concept, setting things up and trying to uh, play around with things to see how they work. And um, there's a common theme that we see in a lot of scenarios. So I thought, okay, why don't I try to set this up and see how it actually works? So um, it's a scenario where we use uh, Canvas and external objects, and um, you could have an external web app built on something like Heroku. So that's the um, demo that I'm going to do today. So let's get going. Um, first, what is Canvas? Canvas is a set of tools and JavaScript APIs that allow for easy integration with a third party application. It allows you to take your existing or new, newer existing applications and make them available to your users as part of their Salesforce experience. So this means you can bring your app right into Salesforce and they can access this other application without ever leaving the system. So under the hood, Canvas apps are loaded into Salesforce through an iframe. So we have Canvas and then we have a Canvas app. So what is a Canvas app? A Canvas app is a special type of connected app within Salesforce that allows users to access the external system directly from within the Salesforce UI. So Canvas includes tools that handle authentication, context, cross-domain XHR, events, and some other things. Um, so it's basically a way for you to communicate and authenticate between Salesforce and the, this other app, and also have your users access this app from within Salesforce. And then we have the Canvas SDK. So the Canvas SDK is used from JavaScript in an app that supports JavaScript to access Salesforce data that the user has access to. So this is important because this gives you the ability to send events to Salesforce or query Salesforce and still work within the context of the user that's accessing this external system. So the data that the data requests that canvas apps make happen in the context of the Salesforce user. So in your external app, you include the canvas SDK in your external app in order to access Salesforce data and publish and subscribe to events using the streaming API. And this is easily included from your Salesforce org using this an example URL like I put here. So you don't even have to do anything special. You just point to this URL for your org and uh, Canvas will work in your other app. So Canvas, a Canvas app on Heroku, why would you want to use Canvas for a web app on Heroku? So Heroku supports multiple programming languages for greater flexibility, such as Node, JS, Ruby, PHP, Python, Java, or even, you can even use build packs for other languages. So building an app on Heroku is more scalable than building an app directly on the force.com platform. Heroku can handle the processing and storage of large data volumes better than Salesforce, and Heroku can extend your Salesforce functionality without your users ever leaving the platform, which is very, very cool. So you might have a situation where you want to write some functionality, you might want to have a lot of data, you're thinking this doesn't really belong in Salesforce. So a way that you can do this is to build your app on Heroku and bring it into Salesforce, and it's like your users never even left the platform. So why does this matter? It allows, use, allows us to extend Salesforce functionality to another platform such as Heroku. And there's no need to rewrite complex existing functionality within Salesforce and you can take advantage of existing applications. So maybe you even have something like a Java or PHP app and you think, okay, well, I would like my users to be able to use this. You can actually bring that onto the Heroku platform and then use it within Salesforce easily. And it allows us to build something new that might not fit well on the Salesforce platform, but still use the functionality from within the sale within Salesforce without ever leaving the UI. So then what about accessing the data that you have on Heroku after the users have interacted with it through the Canvas app? So this is where um, something like Salesforce Connect and OData and external objects comes in. So um, you can ex easily display this data in your other system and relate it to your data 
relate your data in Heroku to your data in Salesforce. So, um, you know, you might have a record in Salesforce and you can relate it to a record in the other system and easily see that data. So you can set up an external data source for your Heroku Postgres database and expose your data as external objects using the OData protocol. So that's very cool. Another example of users not even leaving the system to see what's in the other system. So how do we set this all up? So first you want to have an app deployed to Heroku. So I just built a Node.js app that I deployed to Heroku. And then you set up a connected app for Salesforce to use assigned requests. This is the default. You can use uh, OAuth as well, but um, I chose to go assigned request because there's a lot of stuff that comes over in that signed request to my, my app. So the sign requests containing the consumer key, access token, user contacts, and authentication information is sent to the Canvas app URL. This will be an HTTP post to your application. So for my application on Heroku, um, I use Node.js and I have a route that my Canvas app URL uh, points to. So that's what starts up when uh, the Canvas app is loaded. So on the other side, um, the sign, sign request is decoded and verified in the external app using the shared consumer secret that's in the Salesforce connected app. So when you create a connected app, you'll get a consumer secret and a consumer key. You'll take the secret and then that will have to be known to your other app so that you can go through a, a specific verification and, and decoding process to make sure that that sign request hasn't been tampered with and that it's still valid. And you can also use SAML single sign-on with your Canvas app along with your signed request. So you can have your users uh, use a SAML single sign-on to get into the Canvas app, and then you can do, you could call a Canvas SDK uh, function to refresh the signed request on the other side. So one advantage of a signed request method is that when a Salesforce admin has permitted users to access the Canvas app, no intermediate authorization is required for the app to make requests to Salesforce. So it's very seamless and you, the users don't even know that they're, uh, they're in a different system. Also, how I set this up is I put my Canvas app into uh, an Aura component. So you can use this tag here, force, force Canvas app, to bring your Canvas app into Aura. Um, I don't believe there's support for Lightning Web Components yet. I looked and I didn't see anything, um, but it very well could be. I just didn't find any documentation on it. And I've actually done a couple other things in this demo that aren't really documented. So you just, you never know. <laughs> it's worth a try. Also, you can pass parameters to your Canvas app, such as your object type so that it can work with multiple objects and you can know what kind of record ID it is receiving. So I can drop my, I set up my, uh, or a component to take an attribute. So um, whatever page, whatever lightning page it's on, I can set the type of object that it is. So if I want it on the order page or the account page, or maybe on an event page, however you want to interact with your, your app, you can have it do different things depending on where you actually place that or a component. So now I'll present to you the scenario that I have uh, set up. So this is a common type of requirement we might see in CTA type of scenarios. Um, the company currently has a specialty inventory application. This in-house web-based Node.js application is used by sales consultants and allows them to perform specialized searches for availability and inventory of products. This application does not have an exposed API but can be easily modified. Users need to be able to access this application from within the Salesforce UI. So how can we easily make this work within Salesforce? Let's take a look. And this is what we'll be doing. We will see how a Canvas app can access Salesforce products and the price book to determine the pricing of items in an inventory system from an order in Salesforce. Select and add inventory items from the external app to the order in Salesforce. Take action on the order when events are published from the Canvas app and react to updates on the order status change in the Canvas app. So here you can see I have set up an order for my uh, my user and um, I'm just going to refresh it because I want to make sure this is brand new and my debug. <laughs> so 
over here on the right, you can see this is my inventory. So this here is my Canvas app. So this is my Canvas app being displayed within an Aura component on my order page. And as I mentioned, there's an attribute that tells this Aura component that this is coming from the order page. So what I can do here is I can select a couple of items and I can get my pricing from Salesforce. So you can see how this here is showing my inventory from the external system. Down here is showing my inventory along with the pricing in Salesforce. So you would just have some, you need to have some way to match up your inventory items to your products and price books within Salesforce. So one thing that I mention a lot is your products and pricing should just be for your pricing. It really shouldn't be for your inventory. So this is a good um, display of how your inventory should be separate from your, your pricing and your, your uh, products. So you can have some attribute in your products to match it to like the product family or product code or something like that. Next, I'll add these products to my order. And you can see here this little uh, JavaScript window. This alert is coming from my JavaScript within my Canvas app that's on Heroku. So I click the button over here, and then this sends a, an event to Salesforce. And Salesforce then says, OK, you want to add these products to the order. And then I have a flow behind the scenes that fires and adds the, uh, the line items to the order. So you can see I have my products here added as line items. And then you can go through some other statuses. Maybe you want to take some take a payment, mark the status as payment received. And then I have um, a step here where you actually confirm the order. So maybe um, you need to wait for something else to happen. And then you come back and you say, OK, order is confirmed. So behind the scenes, I then am um, creating assets related to my order product. So you could in your business process, you could say, okay, this is what I actually want to create assets for these products because you want to have an asset in Salesforce related to this external inventory item. And you can see here, I, I have the external inventory item uh, related to this order product. So you can click on this and this is where the external object comes in. You can see the data sitting in the Postgres database. Let's go back here. And then um, you can mark the order as complete. And then the Canvas app uh, reacted to that order status change and it did something in the back end where it updated all the items to be sold. So I should be able to come over here and see the data has changed. So now you can see I'm storing my order ID. I've updated a status. I've stored the price of the item related to the order. But then you also have the situation where maybe you want to cancel the order. So I have the option to do that as well. Order has been canceled. And you can see my Canvas app reacted to that order status change. And it let me know what items were, or, were canceled. And you should see in the back end that these are all available again. So if I want to leave here and come back, I should have showed you another step. So when I do mark these uh, as part of an order, they don't display in the inventory results again. So now you can see that they are back as part of the inventory. So then you could take action over here with your, your order products. Maybe you want to you want to add a status of canceled or something like that on each line item but um, that's the overall flow of how all of this works and um, that's really all I have to show so um, I figured this would be something where you might have a lot of questions you might want to see some of the code um, so maybe I'll just turn it over to Amit and maybe we can do more of a Q&A session Yep, uh, Melissa, that is really great. And if you can show your screen and share like how you build it, like uh, what all staff you did it, that would be really great. And little walkthrough of the code will be helpful for audience. Sure. So uh, first, here is my uh, Aura component. So you can see that um, I have these Canvas, this attribute for my Canvas parameters. Um, I have the force canvas app and I send the parameters over. So 
I actually am sending my record ID as part of these parameters. And then I also have this uh, method called on canvas upload. That's part of the um, canvas app uh, or a component. And then um, this is where I set up my, um, my, my handling of the event coming from canvas. So I still got a lot of debug in here, so don't mind that. Um, so this is my onload function, and this is where I am actually adding the event listener to subscribe to the events coming from Canvas. So I should have mentioned that the event that is um, that Canvas is actually responding to is a platform event, and that is an out of the box platform event set up um, for the order. So I didn't even have to create my own platform event. It's just out of the box. Salesforce has some standard platform events and this this one happens to be on the order status change. So this is the Salesforce side um, and it's just checking to see that the target is Canvas and that this is the name of my event coming from my Canvas app. So it says, okay, that's the event I want. Receive my event from the Canvas app. And then you can see that it sends a payload, it's JSON data. And then I do something with that data. So um, I call my callback function and then um, that it it sends that it, it calls an Apex class that um, I don't have up here, but um, it calls an Apex class that then um, saves the line items. Where is it? Order controller. So this is my controller. So you can see create order lines and then I go through and, and, to, and grab the data that's being sent. So it's a, lot, a string of line items is a JSON string and I gotta deserialize it and all that. So that's the Salesforce side. So here is my Canvas side. So I start with um, the main Canvas app that this, so this here, this this post here in my note app, this is what the Canvas app is pointing to. And I'll, I'll pull that up as well. So this is my connected app here. Oh, and also to use the streaming API, um, you need to have the scope access and manage your data. And you can see here, this is the URL for my Heroku app. You can see the Canvas demo route there for node my node app and that's what that's what is here so it, this is what receives that signed request so it's a post to this endpoint and then this is where i go through and i i did a lot of printing out of um what was in the signed request such as the oauth token and the user id and username so you can get a lot of information on the canvas app side and then um this is where I check to see the record type so I can see if it's an account or an order or an event because I was putting it in different places. So I mostly just worked with the order to, for demo purposes. And then I send to my um, my EJS page, my results and my order ID and the site request itself. But over here, I actually have to do, I found that I had to do a um, refresh signed request to actually get it to work. So. Once I redirect to this page, I then perform um, the refresh sign request using the Canvas SDK. So this is code that I do want to make publicly available so anyone can set this up and uh, play around with it, but um, I'm going to work with somebody to get it uh, as more of a deployable project and, and uh, ready for the public at some point. So because it's a lot of work, and but it's really cool to play around with and set up. That's really great, Melissa. And definitely we'll work with you and get this code hosted on uh, some of the Git repository and we'll share with our audience. Let's see, here's that, here's that refresh sign request function. So this is using the Canvas SDK. So you can see up here, this is the URL that includes the Canvas SDK in my app. And then I can use uh, refresh signed request. Um, there's a couple others in here to show you. Because I know one thing that's confusing is um, like what's happening where and what's used for what. So 
this is very much at the UI layer. So if you want something that's um, very reliable as far as integration, you don't want to be integrating at the UI layer, but this is great for merging your data together between your other app and Salesforce. So things like getting the pricing or you click on something and you want something to happen in Salesforce right away, you can send these events back and forth. So this is where I'm doing the subscribe. So um, you can see I'm subscribing, subscribing to a streaming API event. So the thing that's interesting here is the documentation only talks about subscribing to push topics. I was actually able to subscribe to a platform event. This is that standard platform event that Salesforce creates on order status change when you set that up in your order settings. The, it still has to be labeled as topic though to work. And um, what else did I want to show? Um, and I showed the, the ex this, so this is the external object that's holding the data. Should I try answering some questions in the chat? Yeah, so there is one question. Uh... From the Karthik, he's saying this is a great. I believe Canvas is most underutilized feature in the Salesforce. The question, any limitation which we need to be aware before considering Canvas for integration, integrating app in a Salesforce? Hmm, limitations as in like um, call out limits or anything like that. Um, I actually am not aware of anything like that specifically with Canvas. Um, the, the one limitation is for the UI layer to work, the user does have to be, it does have to have their browser open. So uh, one test I can try to see if it will work is um, changing the status using my console, which I've played around with and it does work as long as the browser is open. Uh, where's my order? So that's one thing you want to think about is any type of integration that um, you're doing, you want to make sure that it's not going to rely on the user having their browser open. My order ID. Let's see if it works. Oh, see, and there you you see that um, my Canvas app reacted to that status change on the back end. But if I was to shut this down, obviously it wouldn't work because it's within the browser session. Perfect. There is a question. Can you please show the page load time of the Canvas? Wait a minute. The page, page load time. Yeah, page load time of the Canvas iframe component. Okay, so let's try to go. So this is a brand new order and it, it loads pretty quick. Sometimes I've noticed it be a little slower, it depends, but this time it loaded pretty quick. Anybody have any other question? Feel free to post into the chat window. So can you can you suggest two mostly common use case of the Canvas app, please? And does this package come with the cost? Um, does the, nope, Canvas SDK doesn't cost anything. It's, I think it's just available for anyone to use. Um, 
I would say you want to use it when you want to bring a web app into Salesforce. So you can even just bring a web app into display data. You don't even have to have any interaction going on between Salesforce and the other app. So if you want to um, display something from some other system that can be accessed by a URL, you can bring that data right into Salesforce. The other use cases, if you have functionality that's in another system and you don't want to recreate that functionality within Salesforce, but you still want your users to be able to access that information. So this is the use case here. As I have my inventory in another system, I don't want users to have to go and log into this other system to look at the inventory. So I bring the inventory into Salesforce. And then also because I have it here, I can then get the pricing from my products and price books in Salesforce. So I can select some items and then you know, I can get the pricing here. So it makes it, you could do this in your other system by making a call out to the Salesforce API, but you have two separate logins. This way you don't have two separate logins. It's all in one place. And then you can, you know, do things like this, add, add the items to the order. So. So there is a question for the canvas, we just need to access for the connected app. Uh, what access is needed for the connected app? For can to access the canvas, we need a connected app. That is a question. Yes. The answer is yes. Yes. So I'll go through that, that again. So this is my, um, you can see Heroku Canvas. That's the developer name of my connected app. So I set this up. Um, as a, as a canvas app. So it's a connected app and then you have to add these canvas settings. Um, so you can, you can say where it's allowed to be, um, exposed. And so one of those locations is lightning component, which is where I put it. And then I'll go back to the, uh, lightning code. So you can see here, that's the developer name of that connected app. So you have to give that here as developer name when you use this force ca canvas app tag. And you mentioned this already, Melissa, but just to point out the uh, key too is you need to be able to edit the application you're trying to connect to. Yep. Thank you. Yep. You need to be able to modify the other app the web app. So it's gotta be something that you can access the code. So I, you need to be able to change the code on this side. So like, this is my node app. You have to be able to modify the code and receive that uh, signed request. And then you do a verify and decode using the, um, the secret to make sure that, that signed request is valid. So here's a little verified and decode method that is on the Canvas app side, the, the external app side. So it's, it's confusing because there's the external app, there's the Canvas app, which is your connected app, and then there's Canvas, which, which involves using the uh, SDK. So there's a question. It is it easier to set up and connect it by an Aura component than using LWC? Or is it fairly similar? Um, for Canvas? Yes. I actually, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know of support yet for, for, can for LWC for this. I couldn't find anything and I just, I didn't end up trying it because I just couldn't find like what it would actually be. But you would basically have to do this in your LWC. But as I mentioned, um, not everything seems to be documented with Canvas. So two things that I did that aren't documented are that I subscribed to an, a platform event over here, as opposed to just a push topic. So I figured, well, if I can subscribe to something in the streaming API, why can't I subscribe to a platform event? So I tried it and it worked. And then the other thing is that's not documented is you'll find in the Canvas uh, documentation about um, receiving events in 
a visual force page or sending events to your canvas app from your visual force page and there's really nothing about doing that within lightning components so that's why i'm saying maybe it will work in lwc as well but the the most i could find was this here that you could just bring your canvas app into a lightning component but there wasn't much about the events going back and forth between lightning and cannabis only visual force so i always say just try it <laughs> experiment that's great anybody have any other question feel free to post in the chat window uh, we are open for last two questions So some um, James say, Melissa, can you please explain the end-to-end -end data flow happening in the use case? Sure, I'll go through that again because I know it's <laughs> it's a little confusing. So I start with an order in Salesforce. So um, you can have this Canvas app dropped kind of anywhere in Salesforce you want. Uh, well, within the limits of what you define in the Canvas app. So it tells you that where you're where your canvas app can be um, so there's all these different locations where you can put it which is it's pretty flexible i mean that one of the cool things is you can even have it in a chatter feed um so i put it on my order page which um is in a lightning component so here i have a lightning component i have the canvas app within the lightning component so the lightning component is pointing to this connected app which brings it into here when i drop the component on the page so Next, um, the user will select some items from this external system, and then they want to get the pricing of these items to say, okay, I need to know how much these cost before I add them to the order. And then they click add to order, and that um, will bring in the, um, you, can, you can see that the pop-ups there, the JavaScript alerts, uh, there's something here where I'm storing some data. So it keeps adding <laughs> the old ones too. There's a bug. This is why I'm not publishing it to the public yet. And I need some, some review on it first. So it was a lot of work just to get it done for the POC. So <laughs> anyway, so you click add to order and the items get added to the order in Salesforce. So it's creating a link between these external inventory items and the products in Salesforce. So these are the order products get the, that get added to the order and um they are related to the external inventory item so then i also added in this completion or this com confirmation which then creates assets in the background so you should then have a related asset so uh, so in salesforce you kind of want to have your assets representing something that actually like a physical thing that somebody owns so if they're purchasing this physical thing in the external system then you can create an asset so i should be able to go to another order and now you should only see a few see the inventory keeps going down because i'm only pulling items that are available from the from the uh database so you can see i put some of these on hold And then when they complete their order, then they get marked as sold in the external system. And then you can cancel it, which will make them available again over here. And then they'll be uh, back to one of these orders. I think it should work. And see, because I canceled it, it just went through and it uh, made everything available again. So that's the flow. It's starting with the available inventory in the other system, selecting the items, getting the pricing, saying, okay, I'm gonna add these items to the order. These items then get added to the order in Salesforce. It creates your order products, which are your order line items. And then it relates these order products to your inventory items 
And then if you want to actually complete the order and say, yep, this order is done it, um, and confirmed, you can change the status, it creates assets, and then you can also cancel and release those inventory items back for somebody else to add to their order. Thank you, Melissa. This is such a great hands-on demo. We really appreciate your effort to building us for us. This is really great. Yeah, it was a, a long time coming, right? <laughs> like six months. <laughs> so I finally got it done. But yeah, it was it was helpful for me to really understand how all of this works and what the data flow is between the systems and what you can do at the UI layer. So I'll mention that you might actually want to do some stuff on the back end as well. So um, something I could do over here in my Canvas app is because I'm getting the OAuth token in that um, sign request, I can actually call the Salesforce API from the server side of my app instead of doing it from the client side. I just want to show the client side how the events can work back and forth firing an event from Can Canvas that does something in Salesforce and then Salesforce firing a platform event that um, the Canvas app then reacts to. So if you don't have an API, you can actually write your backend code um, in here and you can just make a call out to the Salesforce API using that OAuth token that you extract. So you, here I'm pulling the OAuth token off of my signed request and I can use this to then call back into the Salesforce API from the server side of my app and do some data integration there. And then if you have an ESB, even better, then you can um, you can even just call your ESB endpoint from your server side app. But this is all this is all integrating without having an actual exposed API. So just because you don't have an exposed API does not mean you can't integrate your, your systems as long as you can modify this app. So if it's a system you can't modify, then you really want to have an API or you'd have to maybe connect to a backend database using a database driver. That's really great. So first, thank you, Melissa, for such a great demo and sharing your knowledge of 